and at play. So whether you're using the two curbside bin system and separating or the all-in-one roll cart system, keep recycling. Brought to you by Charleston County Environmental Management. Welcome back to the Transportation Sales Tax Program. Uh, we're talking with some women who are part of the Transportation Development Department for Charleston County Government. And they're responsible for managing various projects that you've seen being built in the community, whether it's an intersection improvement or putting in a bridge. And then we too have a uh, Gaynell uh, Whittleship who is working with a management company uh, that's responsible for assisting the county. And she too owns her own business in this. And we've been talking about everything except salaries. And I, I'm going to hit that for a moment, and then we're going to go into some other issues about uh, discrimination if they feel that women are discriminated in this field. I read uh, some information, and it comes from the 2010 census, so it's relative, well, it's a little old, but it's relatively good. And it says here, according to the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics, median weekly earnings by women working full time were about 80% of men's, representing an increase from 62% in the late 70s. So something's going on here, and I'm not quite sure of, of what's going on, but I, I, I see that there are a few women who are working in this area, and then women working in gender-typical occupations, check this out, such as kindergarten teachers, and dental assistants generally earn less than those women working in gender atypical occupations. So y'all better get back to the classroom <laughs> if you know what's good for you. And that leads me into this question of discrimination. Do you feel, did you feel, are you feeling this notion of discrimination in this field, or are you treated just as any male manager out there, or do you find that if a contractor has a question, he'll go to the first guy he sees, as opposed to you all, who are managers of the project? Anybody can answer that one. Um, Everybody's smiling, yeah. so I know it must be good. <laughs> be good. I think personally, I've been very blessed to be working in environments where I've never felt intimidated or discriminated against, but I would say it definitely has happened maybe once or twice where someone is surprised to find out I am the, the project manager or the, you know, the licensed civil engineer in the room that's managing the project. Same thing for you, Debbie? I, I see agree you shaking with that. Your head. I, would, yeah. I would say we definitely, in our office it's five engineers and, and two of us are women, so I don't feel like we're discriminated at, at all where we are, but yes, people are surprised when, when they do find out you're a female managing a project. Gaynell, you have a double whammy because you're both female and you're African American. Have either one of those caused you discrimination? I can't say that I've necessarily been discriminated because of either. Once again, I think I've seen some surprise faces. Well, but if you go on a job and you're knowledgeable and you um, perform well, you quickly gain the respect of the male counterparts. And I think the relationship is what really counts when you're working with anyone in, in any field to be um, diligent at your work and it'll uh, command the respect. Does it take a while though, it did for me when I was the first African American to break into management uh, for the city of Spartanburg. It took a while for the men, and it was all men and me, but it took a while for them to get used to me being around and to accept the things that I said as truth. In other words, to believe that I knew what I was talking about. Have you experienced any of that in the field? Not necessarily in the office, but in the field or elsewhere? I think it's, you know, once people get to know you and your personality and, and what you do know, they tend to gain respect for you. So over time, I, I definitely think it, that gets better. So Would you recommend this field to young women today? Absolutely. Why? 
I, I think it's a great field to be in. And, and like we mentioned in the previous segments, if, if you're enjoying mathematics, it's, it's a fabulous field to get into. The pay is good. Um, there's jobs out there. It's, it's interesting. It's exciting. You get to see your final product, your work. It's very rewarding. Is that nice? <laughs> very rewarding. When you see a bridge that you build or an intersection that you build that makes people now safe or safer as a consequence of your work. Yeah, it, it so is. you recommend, mm -hmm. but uh, there are good colleges for this and not so good, and, and we won't name any of the colleges. Uh, we don't want to get anybody in trouble. I would say make sure that you go to a university that is accredited, yes. because if you do not, then you cannot become a professional engineer. So that is something for young people to pay very close attention to. And to get a job, what kind of experience do you have to have in order to, to get the kinds of jobs that you all hold? Well, right out of college, you normally start as an engineer in training, and that's um, you do that for four years before you can even become a professional engineer. So you do have to do some internship first. And so that would work if you could do an internship with county or cities or whomever else would be building. Well, you just have to do it under a licensed engineer. It has to be under another professional engineer. Is that the same thing for the PE examination? Do you have to study under someone who's licensed already? It's the same, yes. It's the same kind of thing. So as far as you're concerned, all three of you, it's working out. Yes. It's, and you'll stay with it for a little while. <laughs> you won't go, it's nothing against kindergarten teaching. Uh, it must be fun to be around little children, but when you can use the brain that you have been given to its maximum, that has got to be satisfying. Thank you ladies for being a part of our program today. We really enjoyed talking with you so very much and hope that you'll come back again. Molly Lemon sitting next to me, uh, Gaynell Whittleship, and Devery Detoma. And these are our lady engineers in the Charleston County Transportation Sales Tax Program. We hope that you've enjoyed the program as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Until next time, I'm Cheryl Halston. For more information about the Charleston County Transportation sales tax program and specific information on the road construction improvement projects, visit us on our web at roads.charlestoncounty.org. Also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter at CC Roadwise. The historical and cultural foundations of the nation should be preserved as a living part of our community life and development in order to give a sense of orientation to the American people, so states a section of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. To that end, it is paramount to preserve the richness of the Lowcountry. Charleston County needed to expand the Palmetto Commerce Parkway to relieve traffic congestion along Dorchester Road and I-26, which run parallel to the parkway but first an archeological survey had to be conducted. When we conducted the survey, we walked through the swamps that are all around us here, and we quickly encountered several banks and canals and ditches uh, that led us to believe right away that they were um, parts of inland rice fields. In fact, all of the former plantations through which the Palmetto Commerce Parkway passes grew inland rice throughout the 18th century that were developed and maintained by enslaved Africans. Due to this mitigation project, um, we were able to cut into the banks to study the internal composition of them, the way they were built and constructed. So we're actually learning about the technology involved in the building of these um, embankments. Charleston County worked with the South Carolina Department of Archives and History to develop a plan to document and protect these important historical features. To further educate the local community about the importance of rice and the enslaved Africans whose struggles made it possible, Charleston County has developed a traveling trunk program. The Inland Rice Fields Traveling Trunk Program is an interactive, hands-on, 
educational tool geared towards elementary and middle school students. The program includes lesson plans, classroom activities, replica artifacts, and historical items. I think Charleston County School District has long been aware of the connection between Charleston and the west coast of Africa, also known as the Rice Coast, um, as a key part of our local history and the development of the Carolina colony. I think that our children need to know more about the history of the country. They need to know more of the history of why over 250,000 people were enslaved and brought here and what they did. And uh, the more children understand about the history, the better they're going to become as people. I think it's pretty cool because it brings things from the um, 1700s. I think that's cool. I think it's fantastic because we get to learn about things in the past that other people didn't know about. I think it's kind of cool because it's, it's kind of showing us stuff from the past. I want to see this again because I have a feeling that if everybody else sees it, that they'll learn a lot. If you want to talk about rice production in South Carolina Low Country, and you have a traveling trunk with items in that trunk that boys and girls can actually look at and feel and smell and, and listen to and play with, then that's the beginning of uh, concrete, basic understandings that can be developed into abstracts. Students learn about the plantation economy and the contribution of enslaved African um, individuals who were brought to this country and ultimately helped develop our economy and helped teach people about how to um, cultivate rice, how to um, make rice a, a lucrative product, and ultimately were really contributed to the local development of, of this area. So we think that puts a lot of pride and self-esteem in our students when they know that their ancestors were part of the beginning of this, uh, of this wonderful area that we live in. Thank you, Charleston.